The Christmas Carol is about a very miserable character called uh, Mr. Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, and uh, he uh, he doesn't want any contact with any human being. Basically, he's a miser. He's uh, he's a hateful man, and uh, I seem to play a lot of Christmas ca characters like that. He's kind of the original Grinch, you know, the the, the one that the real, the Grinch was based on, and. Uh, he lives a very lonely, isolated life and uh, with no love and no connection. And uh, what happens is he has this extraordinary ex experience where he's visited by three ghosts, and uh, as I am constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, we're all basically haunted by spirits until we realize that we have to kind of get involved in life and enjoy ourselves. And that's what the story's about. The unmistakable voice you just heard there was that of Jim Carrey speaking about his roles of Scrooge and the ghosts in the 2009 Disney's A Christmas Carol, which is one of the many adaptations from the 1843 novella of the same name by the great Charles Dickens. The story is about a miserable old shit called Ebenezer Scrooge who hates Christmas and everyone that celebrates it. He's so cheap that he won't even spend money on heating his office, so his poor clerk Bob Cratchit has to work in the cold. But one night, Scrooge is visited by three ghosts who show him the error of his ways. The first ghost is the ghost of Christmas past, who takes Scrooge back in time to show him how he used to love Christmas. The second ghost is the ghost of Christmas present, who shows Scrooge how much fun everyone else is having on Christmas Day. And the third ghost is the ghost of Christmas yet to come, who shows Scrooge what will happen if he doesn't change his ways. In the end, Scrooge realises that he's being a total cunt and decides to become a better person. He buys a turkey for Cratchit and the family, he even goes to his nephew's house for Christmas dinner and everyone lives happily ever after. Apart from maybe Tiny Tim who dies of a mysterious illness but you know shit happens. So yeah Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens an absolute classic and the subject and topic of today's podcast. Hello and welcome to the Adapted to Screen podcast, a Christmas, Christmas, Christmas special. I'm Richie. I'm Phil. And I'm Steve. And this week we will be talking about the absolute classic, A Christmas Carol. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. Hello, Phil. I, I trust you are well. I am well, Richie, yourself? Yeah, good, good, good. Can't complain. Can't complain. I've been uh, busy editing and shit, but yeah, all good, all good. Uh, on the subject, if you want to go and check out some of our other podcasts, I've just edited uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was a good one. You should check that out if you haven't already. Yeah. Steve, you good? Yes, I'm great. Thank you. I'm great. I'm uh, enjoying work at the moment so yeah brilliant mm, you seem to have lots on lots of gigs and shit yes yeah steve is our resident comedian which is almost me prematurely announcing the announcement that we've got to announce phil do you want to make that announcement well, the announcement is we have a new co-host, Stephen Dodd. He joined us for The Wanderers and we loved him that much that he's now going to be a permanent member of the Adapted to Screen family. So welcome, Steve. Thank you. I'm very much looking forward to it. So thank you ever so much. You say that now, but when you realise how much reading and work goes into this, <laughs> you might change your mind. <laughs> Seven books in, you'll be like, fuck this, I've got other things, I've got better things to do with my time. What we're doing no. next week, we're doing It by Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible. <laughs> uh, Steve, a very a very quick question. Obviously, you are a Stephen with a PH. How do you abbreviate Steve? Stephen with a PH? I just put it as Steve. Steve. Oh, okay. Steve -E. um, That's literally the biggest fuck you to your parents. Go in, isn't it, really? It is, no. it is, but they don't we see it when I do that. And when I used to was at school, I used to put my full name, Stephen. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My mum's very particular about the P and the H. So, yes, yes, you're right, yeah. Indeed. Lovely. So we have been delving into A Christmas Carol, different versions of the film, obviously only one version of the book. Which versions have you, well, version or versions have you been looking at, Steve? I watched the Alistair Sims 1951 version and I watched the Scrooged version with Bill Murray last week. The Alistair Sims one was a real eye-opener for me because what I didn't know was George Cole, a.k.a. Arthur Daly, played the young Ebenezer Scrooge. Mm. No shit. Yeah, yeah. Our American yeah. friends won't have a fucking clue who he is. No, they won't, no. <laughs> Nobody outside of the UK will know who he is, but... No, uh... no. 
classic TV in the 1980s. Well, I, I did find it out of all the versions that I've watched over the years, I did find it as true to the book as possible. Very dark and a bit depressing, to be fair. Very dark and depressing, which I think that Dickens was trying, was, was purveying in his book. But yeah, it was very, very depressing. Right, mm. so obviously, I won't put a spoiler out because nobody <laughs> ever knows how the story ends, do they? Obviously, nobody's heard or seen it before. No, but it was, it was very dark, very well acted and uh, very true to the book, the 1951 version. Phil, which ones have you been looking at? Well, I started to watch Scrooge from 1935 and fucking out. I pro- I lasted about 20 minutes and I was like, I can't, I can't physically do this anymore. Uh, it was Scrooge and it was Scrooge in colour. So obviously they'd gone back and colourised it. My seven-year-old son said, I know it says Scrooge in colour, but could it be Scrooge in words? Because I can't hear a f- didn't say a fucking thing, but he said, I can't hear a thing. And it was, we had to put subtitles on at one point. And it was just, it really started to hurt my eyes. And I was like, you know what? We'll just put the um, the Jim Carrey animation version on. So we watched uh, we watched the 2009 version with Jim Carrey. And I think that's who was playing in your intro, Richie. Uh, I also watched Scrooged because I watch it once a year. I think it's a great film. And it's similar to, I think the, uh, I think the 2009 version was very close to the book as well. I thought the films made Scrooge out to be a right twat but in the book I just thought he was misunderstood well I've always had the impression over the years that Scrooge is a bit of a twat however as I've got older I'm starting to relate to him more and more (laughs) and if those ghosts ever come along I'm just going to tell them to fuck off (laughs) no you're wrong. I've looked at... I've watched Scrooge. Never watched it before. So that was the first time I watched that with Bill Murray. I watched... This, do you know, I, I, I would wager that this is the most adapted story ever than anything else. Apart from maybe Bible stories. But yeah, there, there's so many different versions. And I tried a few of them. And like yourself, Phil, most of them I, I had to turn off after about five, ten minutes. They were just absolute shite. But yeah, uh, I tried the Bill Murray version and I was going to watch The Muppets Christmas Carol, and that's from 1992 or something like that, and that was 13 quid, so I didn't bother. I did, I did, I did, I did. I did A Christmas Carol, C-A-R-O-L-E, so it's her name is Carol, and she's the Ebenezer Scrooge, even though she's not called Ebenezer. And to be honest, I thought it was a really good ad- adaptation. The only other, I was going to watch another one with, um, what's, his, what's his face out of the... Um, the office, I forget his name. Steve Carell. Was, no, 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 the, the British office. He was um, Martin the Freeman. more normal one, Martin Freeman. There was one with him from 2008, I think it was. And uh, I was going to watch that, but I didn't get round to it. So, yeah. So I'd read the book and watched this version, the 1951 version. I didn't realise how hard Scrooge's life had been up until the story starts. It was, you know, he'd lost his mother during childbirth. His sister died during childbirth he was involved in a company where there was embezzlement and and fraud it's just a real sort of the backstory it doesn't warrant what the way he was but the backstory paints his um his hatred of christmas a lot clearer well yeah i think uh, it's like i was saying earlier on i think screw especially when you read the book i think he's uh very misunderstood and they do a lot of things in the in the films to make him come across as right mean and miserable but if you look at it like this the book is uh the book is basically it tells a story of he was I'm guessing he's an accountant. I can't really figure out what they actually do. He's a debt collector. Is it? He's he fucking getting a penny out of me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> fucking punching him straight in the face. He's a money, that's what he's, he's a money lender, isn't he? I thought accountant. I wasn't quite sure. I, I thought accountant as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, in the book, it starts off that like he's. It, it's been seven years since his partner Marley died, and from what I can gather, he's been a bit depressed about that, and he hasn't really got over it. The name's still above the shop. He's still answers to both names if someone comes in and goes Mar- Mr Marley or Mr Scrooge he says yes he's got a geezer who does a bit of graph for him and 
he keeps himself to himself. He's not really that bothered about going out. He hasn't really got any friends. In the book, his house is not like it is in the films. It's quite, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, not meagre, but it's simple. You know, he's got a seat and a chair and a fire and a bed. And that's about it. And he gets on with his life. And just because he doesn't want to go out for Christmas or celebrate like other people do, I don't really see that as a problem, particularly. You can just do what you want to do and get on with your life and not have to conform to everyone's the only bit he didn't like was having to pay Bob Cratchit for a day's work he weren't doing. <laughs> I absolutely agree. I mean, it, we, I agree with, with Scrooge implicitly because I, I was only yesterday went for a balty and we sat on the table on about what we're going to buy each other. I was with the missus and her, her folks and I said at the end of the day, for me, Christmas is for the kids. It's not for adults, it's for the kids. I said, you earn more money than me. If you want something, you go and buy it because you can afford it. I don't want anything. <laughs> I don't want anything, so you don't need to buy me anything. But you can, in fact, if you, you can buy something better than what I can get, yeah, because you've got more money. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense. It's for the kids. Christmas is for the kids. It shouldn't be for adults. It's. I don't know why we started doing this. It needs to. It needs to stop. <laughs> well, it was um, uh, as I was just saying about the uh, book about Scrooge probably been a bit misunderstood. What they did in the in the Christmas Carol that. I watched yesterday with Jim Carrey. They very much straight away make him out to be a bit of a twat because they they take it from the death of uh, Jacob Marley and he's in the, he's in the coffin and he's got two coins on his eyes, obviously to pay the ferryman. And he takes them off his eyes and goes, "Well, tuppence, it's tuppence." And you're like, so they're making him all ready to be mean and miserable and horrible. Where in fact he actually, in in, in my particular viewpoint, was just a bit lonely. Yeah, listening to you two now and me watching the film and the book I'm thinking it's just basically peer pressure that he's had to give in to in the end that's all it is it's spiritual peer pressure and it's like having Derek Akora as your best friend and because you don't like Christmas <laughs> he'll send free ghosts to your house until, until you do like Christmas so yeah it is ultimate peer pressure and he's been forced to be a nice person. He's been forced to be yeah. a nice person because if he doesn't be a nice person, he's going to go to some sort of purgatory that's going to be absolutely fucking nasty. So he's been forced yeah. to be a nice person. He doesn't really want to. Let's be honest. If, if, if we've been true to life, he doesn't want to be a nice person. And, I, I, you know, that's who he is. That's, that's his personality. That's who he is. Why the fuck should he... Uh, yeah, peer pressure. Absolute peer yeah, pressure. Definitely. Shall we move on to author's bump then, Richie? Yes, yes, yeah, 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 let's do let's do that. Author's bump! Charles John Huffam Dickens, born 7th February 1812 and died the 9th of June 1870, was an English novelist and social critic who created some of the world's best-known fictional characters. So, instead of just banging on about our good old Charles Dickens, who was born in Portsmouth or around the Portsmouth area, we just list a few of his novels and novellas. I think we all know these. Uh, the Pickwick Papers, which was, what do they call it now, serialised uh, in the newspapers, which really picked uh, up his career and led to merchandising of all strange and weird things. Oliver Twist, Nicholas Nickleby, The Old Curiosity Shop, A Christmas Carol, The Cricket on the Hearth, uh, The Haunted Man, David Copperfield, Bleak House, Hard Times, A Tale of Two Cities, Great Expectations and The Mystery of Edwin Drood, uh, which I actually have seen, uh, Great Expectations. The I think it was the Ethan, Ethan Hawke version. Very good, actually. I, d- I did watch something that I thought was Charles Dickens, but it was David copper feel so I, I'd miss <laughs> miss search then on Google so just be careful out there wherever you're listening when you when you're searching on Google it's called David Copperfield. <laughs> Half hour in, I realised they've got the wrong film. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't yeah. want to speak. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, that was the author's bump. We're going to move on to our next new section that I'm just testing out for the next season, which is Richie's Fun Facts. She hard bodies, really informative and interesting fun facts. Yes, that's correct. So, we're going to move on to that. Firstly, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just going to reel them off. Firstly, A Christmas Carol was written by Charles Dickens in just six weeks under financial pressure. The novella's full title is A Christmas Carol in Pose, being a ghost story of Christmas. Didn't know that. Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol as a work of social commentary with the aim of raising awareness of some of the problems in Victorian society. The book was such an immediate hit 
that barely a month after its debut, Dickens was embroiled in a legal fight against publishing company that had printed pirated copies. How, how would they pirate something in the... In the 1800s, how would they would they just sort of write it down word for word? How would they pirate something there? I'm quite intrigued there as to see how they would pirate. I'm guessing they'd just print it out themselves and then sell it themselves. Yeah. Well, I would imagine, yeah, because it, it would it would have been printed work, wouldn't it? I would imagine they'd have typewriters at least in 1870 or around about that time when it was. They'd have had printing presses back then. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so the, probably yeah. So basically, uh, they were the China of the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've got to give them their due. I mean, that level of work, rather than just ripping a film off LimeWire. So, uh, yeah, and actually printing it out, yeah? That's that's some graph there for piracy. According to these fun facts, I think some of what happens in A Christmas Carol may come from some of his own experiences. It says here, Dickens had a lifelong devotion to helping the underserved due to his own family's experiences with debtors in prison, which forced him to drop out of school as a boy and work in a factory. So, yeah, his dad went to a debtor's prison for three years. Yeah. It's prison just for not paying. Not paying your bills, probably. Yeah, I guess so. So there weren't none of them companies around then that would freeze your debt and then and then you pay them three hundred pounds for the rest of your life <laughs> just to clear your debts. Then off. so you actually went to prison then. Enough proof that life was a lot tougher in the eighteen hundreds. So yeah. Yeah. So that was my fun facts. She hard bodies really informative and interesting fun facts. Brilliant. That Every, is everything. You, everything. You- I need to somehow turn the loop off. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> right, if we're going to look at Scrooge, then if we're going to if we're going to compare uh, Christmas Carol to Scrooge, yeah, let's do the the trailer, Richie, shall we? Uh, yes, do the trailer. You don't need to do yours first. Y- y- well, I thought yes, yes, I'll do mine first. A cynical, selfish television executive is haunted by three spirits bearing lessons on Christmas Eve. Short and sweet every time. Uh, It's it's barely worth me putting any music underneath it. it (laughs) Do you want me to do do the actual Scrooge one? Because that's a lot longer. It's that ransom demand voice again. (laughs) It's every time. It's every time, Steve. Every time. It's every time. (laughs) Children. (laughs) Fucking keep them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> right you're gonna do yours then Rick. yeah i'll do mine so this is my trailer my attempt i can't even remember what the fuck i've done but this is my attempt at a trailer in a world where christmas is just another day one man is about to get a wake-up call from the ghosts of christmas past present and future but this time they are not here to teach him a lesson they're here to teach him a dance Watch as Ebenezer Scrooge, played by the one and only Danny DeVito, learns to cut a rug with the best of them. From the creators of Peaky Blinders comes a holiday classic that will have you laughing, crying, and tapping your toes. Coming soon to a theater near you. Don't miss it. That's good. That's mine. This ties in this this ties in well with my remake later. <laughs> very good. Okay, so very quickly, the cast of Scrooge, which was a nineteen eighty-eight movie directed by Richard Donner and written by Mitch Glazer and Michael O'Donoghue, along with the credit for Charles Dickens, stars Bill Murray as Frank Cross and Karen Allen as Claire Phillips, John Forsyth as Lou Hayward. We also have John Glover as Bryce Cummins, Bobcat Goldthwait as Elliot Loudermill. We have David Johansson as the Ghost of Christmas Past, Carol Kane as the Ghost of Christmas Present, and I think we have, oh, we also have here Lee Majors as Lee Majors. He was in one of the adverts they were showing when they was in the boardroom, and they were like, oh, what have we got? I think there was some kind of Lee Majors horror action or something like that. Who's the one that reminds me of Bono that was in Police? Academy. That's Bobcat Goldthwait. And I believe Robert Mitchum. Uh, I think so. I think I might have just scrolled past his name and not mentioned it. Yeah, Robert Mitchum was Preston Rhinelander. Wasn't he the Marley character? No, he was the TV executive. John Forsyth, who was Blake Carrington, was the... Um, L- Lou movie. Haywood. Yeah. Yes, he was the, the Marley-type character. Uh, so we have, obviously, I think we all know the, uh, the premise of A Christmas Carol. So you've got Scrooge, who is visited first of all by Marley and told he's going to have 
spirits there. And basically, in the book and in the films, in the earlier films, and I think even in Scrooge as well, Marley, the Marley character, says to Scrooge, they're coming to visit you to help you. Otherwise, you're going to end up like me. So it's very much, it's a man who is deserving of help rather than deserving of torture. So he's there to help him so he can help everybody else. And I think Bill Murray plays... I don't even think he's likeable at the end, is he? Is he, is he a likeable character at the end? He's still a twat. It's just Bill Murray. Whatever he's in, he's just Bill Murray. And we love no, him. No, I do well, as well. I love him. Yeah. I love him. It's just, it's just Bill Murray, whatever he does. He's just completely over the top. I, mean, I, I think I think they've done a really good job with... Obviously, it's the late 80s. They've got all all the prosthetics and all the, uh, the makeup effects, the special effects, even though they're all practical. Yeah. But I thought it was a very, very funny film, and it's funny every time I watch it, even though I only watch it once a year. I don't know about what you thought, Richie. I've got what would be considered an unpopular opinion. I didn't like it. I thought Bill Murray overplayed his part. Just didn't come across realistic. It just he seemed like he was overacting. And there's only certain people who can overact like that, and Jim probably Jim Carrey and Steve Carell being two of them. He just it just didn't come across believable at all for me personally I mean it's one of them again if I'd watched it when I was younger and grew up with it maybe I'd love it like I do the Goonies I always say this I love the Goonies now because I grew up with it but if I came into the Goonies now never watching it when I was younger I'd probably hate it yeah but Richie well you, you were saying there about Bill Murray overacting have you never seen a Bill Murray film yeah Ghostbusters and I loved him in Ghostbusters but then again I grew up with Ghostbusters Okay, fair enough. But he was still an obnoxious twat, and he's in Kingpin, and he's he's a total wanker in Groundhog Day. And the geezer is the most dislikable person ever. He's just the same in every film. It's not about the characters, it's about his acting in the film. I just didn't like it. He just didn't sell the part for me. Not that oh, I could do he, it better. He's saying he didn't sell you as being mean and miserable. He didn't come across believable. The believable, I think it was he was probably too mean and miserable, I think. Yeah. But he didn't. No, he didn't even look like he believed himself. Everything, everything he did seemed sarcastic. It was like <laughs> I'm saying. This, I'm saying this. I don't really you believe know it. What I was more happy with, right? Because I found the book really hard to read. It was a lot of obviously Victorian language, and you know, hitherto, hego and all this kind of nonsense and I was just like I'm really suffering with this and I kind of know how it's going to go and uh, do I have to be bombarded with the complete knackerism of Victorian language how the fuck did they survive I really do not know I've, I've got a confession to make I actually brought the audible version that was read by you, Grant. So the fact that you, Grant, was reading those Victorian words just made it more. It just made it easier for me because if I was to read those in my head, in my voice, I wouldn't have a clue. But because he was reading it, it <laughs> I didn't realise how much of a filthy and a promiscuous bastard Ebenezer Scrooge was because it wasn't until the end when he changed. He stopped having intercourse with ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> he said that right at the end. <laughs> he did, he did actually, yes. <laughs> Go shagger. <laughs> and now we're on to the film The Entity, which was the remake <laughs> of uh, Scrooge. So, yeah, yeah the, the sequel. But I think Scrooge sort of captured corporate America in the 80s that money's everything and it, it's it's worrying because 35 years later, nothing's changed, one little bit. You know, you could remake that film now. Scrooged, and just still the storyline would still be the same, which we will be remaking at the end. They did with Christmas Carol, didn't they? With the the, the woman who played the Scrooge character. Yes, yes. it was exactly the same. That was about uh, she owned a, a business and she was going to sell it for a billion or something like that. She, obviously, she changed her ways because peer pressure. Yeah, from ghosts, peer pressure from ghosts. Yeah, you see, Debbie Moore had all that, didn't she? And Whoopi Goldberg, they know all about it. Okay, so let, right, let's talk about the differences of the ghosts. So in the uh, in the original, in A Christmas Carol, he's visited by a flame-headed ghost who takes him around his childhood where we see him alone at what seems to be a private school. And then later on, his sister comes and collects him uh, and takes him home for Christmas. And it will be so very merry. In the Alistair Sims version, the sister comes to collect him from school and it's George Carl playing him. And again, he looks about 28. So you think he, he's, he's <laughs> what's he still doing at school? Has he been held back for 12 years? Because it just doesn't look and, right. Uh, in, the, uh, in the Scrooge adaptation, it's the little Tinkerbell fairy woman. And I think this is where I think, especially watching it as a child, you watch that and you're like, oh, that's fucking shit. He's sitting there thinking he's going to get a choo-choo train. His dad gives him like a quarter pound of veal. 
or whatever it is because that's all because he, he spent all his dough down the boozer the night before and you're just thinking oh how bloody sad for a kid he's, he's wants to get a train he's got a bit of meat I actually watched a CGI adaptation I forgot what it was A Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey and Gary Oldman that one no 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 no. it was um, it was like a some sort of Pixar version I don't think it was Pixar but it was that type of thing it was like a musical it was actually I've got it was called um, it's, a, it's a Netflix animated 2022 Christmas Carol I gave it 4 out of 10 it was it was awful but maybe that's because I'm an adult the ghosts in that were just ridiculous so yeah I watched lots of versions I can't remember they all seem to blend into one or the ghost of this I, I thought Marley in the story did wasn't needed you didn't need Marley as a ghost in the story I remember when I did the play at school when I was in primary school it, it was the first time I'd ever heard of Charles Dickens and the Christmas Carol so we've been doing this play and we've got the theme ghosts Marley was never mentioned and I didn't find out about Marley till afterwards and when I found out about Marley I thought what's the point in him being a ghost you don't need him he's just coming along and saying oh you're going to be visited by three ghosts why does he need to be well, warned because for the story Marley is there to to put the human aspect to Scrooge and for you to understand why Scrooge is a complete knobhead and in fact he's not a knobhead seven years ago his best mate and his business partner died and he hasn't got over it and so what Marley does he appears to Scrooge and says if you don't change your ways you're going to end up like me look at these chains I've got that I'm strapped to I did this because all I did was think about business and Scrooge goes well what else is there other than business and he said go in places seeing things living your life you're going to be visited by three ghosts who are going to show you why otherwise you won't change your ways you're going to end up like me. Like in the Alice the Sims version, the, for the ghosts, I thought, were, again, as close to the book as possible. Uh, one was very regal. I think it was the ghost of Christmas presents. Very regal. Looked like a big fat king. Yeah, and again, what, what Phil said about Marley was, I think Marley was trying to say on his deathbed as well, it's not too late for me to change. It's definitely not too late for you to change. And then, but it was so eerie, the, the, the Alice the Sims one. It was like, the Undertaker was there waiting for Marley to die and the woman said, how, how did you know he was going to die? And he said, oh, we just know these things. <laughs> we can smell them. Just makes me glad that I'm alive in this time of the world. <laughs> not then. Yeah, because uh, in the same, in the 1935 version, the Ghost of Christmas present was like a huge giant kind of Father Christmassy man with a crown on his head and like you know a big long cape um, and the same in the 2009 version as well which I what I liked about the Scrooge one was the Ghost of Christmas Present was just some drunk taxi driver <laughs> who clearly just lived in his <laughs> car. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Hey, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was good. And uh, I, I liked that in, in all of the adaptations when the, basically he's taking them to his family. So in Scrooge, he's not his nephew, it's his brother. He goes there, you know, they're all having a good time. They're all playing games, having a drink. And uh, he discovers that his secretary sent him a, an expensive robe or something rather than a tea towel set he's like right get her sacked and it's like you still haven't learned have you you've just been kicked in the balls by a fucking tinkerbell fairy you've been driven through a wall by a ghost taxi driver and you're still kicking off you know what I mean at least Scrooge in the book and in the original films he was more or less repentant immediately he was like I'm really sorry I need to change you know what I mean please don't show me anymore I'll change where like Bill Murray's like fuck this shit <laughs> fucking knobheads in the Alistair Sims version as well, what sort of got me was a little bit was when Scrooge puts his head out the window and tells the boy to go and buy a turkey. And I'm thinking, there's no shops open on Christmas Day. Not in the main. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then they've got to cook the turkey. So it, it, the turkey that he was talking about, you've got to allow so much, I think it's 20 minutes for each pound. <laughs> they ain't eating till about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. So in the main town centres, like 1980. Yeah, 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 which it was London. It was Camden. It was Camden, wasn't it? <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you're right yeah. there because because always in the book and that's the whole bit about the book when he's free and he's like shit right you boy get the biggest turkey you can but it, he says get the biggest turkey you can oh, no 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 what he says is is that is that massive turkey still up in the in the butcher's window and he's like yeah because go and get it then he's like well, give me some fucking money then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not just that. It turned, it's 1800 and odd. He'd turn around and go, I can't, it's the Lord, Lord's Day, you silly old cunt. <laughs> yeah. Shut. And then, some old dealers probably paid Christmas Club every week for 52 weeks for that type of thing. So he just thinks he can come in and go zompa <laughs> because he's got loads of money. So, yeah. It's disgraceful. <laughs> no, but I think I think like you were saying there though, Steve, about it being the Lord's Day, like 
clearly, you know, this was, I mean, this was almost 160 years ago. So things change, you know, it, Christmas wasn't commercial. Let's get it straight, right? People had a candle to see when it got dark and shat in a bucket. That was their life. They had, there was no, there was no heating. So, so if the butcher's open, the butcher's fucking open. I don't give a fuck if it's Christmas. I'm, I'm fucking selling some shit. But the bit I didn't get was, right, you've got some little scrot walk into your shop and go, Kiss that biggest turkey, mate. I'll pay you in 20 minutes. You fuck off, you little twat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not walking in JD going, can I have them Nike Air at the top for, uh, for my dad's mate? And you come and pay you in a bit. They'll be like, oh, yeah, go on then. And then he gets a taxi. And that was, that, to be honest, that got me. It's like, there's people, there's taxis just popping around on Christmas days and everyone in the house cooking their food. There's no cars for a start. No, well, no, well, well, it was horses and carts, weren't it? Yeah, horse drawn carriage. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose we'll pay a charging double fare. I would imagine a time and a half. <laughs> well, yeah, and the, and the charge for the turkey as well. They'd count that as a passenger as soon as you get in. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, no animals in here, yeah. mate. No, no. It's difficult to talk about the differences between the book and the films in this one because they've obviously tried to adapt it to the the time that they've done the filming and. There's so many differences when you compare the 1930s version, the 50s version. There's probably some done in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And that them, them all going to be completely different because they've done it for around the time they've been created. I mean, like Scrooge, that was done in the 90s, you know, with the that financial climate in, in mind. And it's completely different than how it would have been in the 30s. I mean, they've tried to keep the core story the same, but it's completely different, isn't well, it? Some fun, Actually, some fun facts. Scrooge, 1935, that is the oldest film I've ever watched. I've never seen I've never sat and watched a film older than, well, maybe, but definitely 1935 is the oldest film I think I've ever watched. But the most interesting fact about that is the, the gentleman who played Scrooge, Seymour Hicks, was born in 1871 and he's got to be the oldest actor that I've ever seen and by and by that point he was like 60 odd it's just absolutely bizarre uh, but one of the things that took from the animated version of the Christmas Carol when the ghost of Christmas yet to come confronts Ebenezer with his own gravestone Ebenezer's shocked it's like Ebenezer you're about 80 years fucking old right and you're in the Victorian age you're lucky to still be alive you know what I mean how can you be surprised that you're going to die because you're you're an old knacker. Now, in the Scrooged version, that seemed a bit more like when Bill Murray saw his own death. That was a bit more shit. I need to change my ways because I'm only 40 odd. You know what I mean? I, I want to live till I'm 100 kind of thing. Or I want to live till I'm 80. Whereas when Scrooge is confronted, it's like, Geezer's 100 years old already. You know what I mean? How could it be surprised he's going to die? Yeah, speaking about being old and being an old knacker, this is a true story. It was about a couple of weeks ago at work. A young lad, he's about 21, 22, I think he is. And he was sat around talking and nonchalantly, he didn't mean it as an offence. He just came out and he said, you know, just straight faced, what was it like growing up in the 1900s? Fuck the fucking hell, mate. I felt like a right old fucking knacker. <laughs> he just... <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I, I just looked and got, got smacked and at some point during the conversation, he also came out with, it's weird because when you think about it, you were born, you you grew up in the 1900s, you might have known somebody when you were a really little kid walking around and you'd probably have bumped into somebody from the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I might have. I might have. You could have, yeah. You could have been... You could have been sat on your... mate. I'm 43 and you've just made me feel like I'm 120. Well, that's true, though. I mean, when you were first born, <laughs> if your, like, what, great-grand-dad was alive, then he would have probably been quite quite close. I mean, um, uh, the Mrs. Nan died a couple of years ago and she was 90. So that was 1910. So, you know, there's, there's every chance that... Uh, and she's a lot younger than I am. So there's every chance that, yeah, you could have been sat on your great-granddad's knee when you were first born. And he was touching like 1899 or something. A bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, didn't need to hear it though. Look at Stephen crying in the corner, going, fucking yeah. <laughs> that might have been. I was born in 73. I probably know people from the 17, 1700s, mate. So. I think the story is timeless. And, and that's the good thing about the story. It is timeless. But then the adapting to certain generations, I think every generation moving on could rewrite that story moving on. And obviously we'll come to that. We'll come to that later. But I just think it's such a classic time. And I think one of the things that Dickens did very well, especially in a lot of his other works, was there was almost like, I know that every story's got a moral kind of point to it, but 
there was very much like especially with Canterbury Tales and David Copperfield and this there's a kind of you know in this story in particular it's you know kind of like live your life don't hide away don't be miserable enjoy yourself because you've only got one life don't waste it you know that he owned a brewery as well didn't you did he really? Yeah, we made Dickens cider because our nan said she was never happy unless she had a Dickens cider. <laughs> <laughs> and this, everyone, is why we've got Stephen on the podcast. <laughs> 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 Absolutely not. Staying first in. and last appearance on the podcast. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just turned. I just remembered that then, Dickens. <laughs> uh, actually, I think um, I think I saw. Uh, isn't that uh, an Australian side or was an Australian advert? Yeah, or yeah. They're interviewing people and there's going, yeah, oh, I'm not happy unless I got Dickens. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good, Steve. Uh, Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Perfect. <laughs> okay, should we talk about the character differences between the yes. films and the? Oh, we already done that, really. Oh, well, we kind no. of have really. We're going, we're going yeah. to touch that, haven't we, really? Though. we've kind of touched on that it's, it's like they, they've, they've done it cleverly into into that certain generation into that era they've done it really really cleverly yeah. Yeah. and I think as Steve said earlier on this has been adapted since the dawn of fucking time you know before the second world war started this has been adapted to screen and several times and a hundred times over and the characters mostly stay the same uh, with the little bits of things like Scrooge and maybe the one that you watch Richie the Christmas Carol adjusting it for the times and for a different look on on a different aspect too and maybe better CGI and better practical effects than you had in 51 or 35 and you know the, I think the, probably the one constant or actually the few constant characters uh, Bob Cratchit is constant Tiny Tim is constant the ghosts pretty much are constant and Scrooge up to a point is constant other than the book and I think the Scrooge in the book is just a bit of a lonely old chap where he's made out to be a right cunt in all of the other adaptations I imagine him smelling of piss and biscuits in the book <laughs> and, and if you think about it right if, if you think about it what, 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 what we've grew up on and it's not even reading the book or watching the films particularly if someone's a bit tight with their money they're Scrooge so already it's the connotation of Scrooge is bad but actually Scrooge wasn't a bad person he employed people he paid his taxes he worked hard he lived a frugal life he didn't you know spend money on things he didn't need to spend it on his philosophy was a year older and a penny richer that's got that that's how he lived his life again we don't know what it was like when he, when he was with marley maybe marley was that driving force because as marley said or, or marley's ghost said there's more to life than business and scrooge was like what you want about you, you know as if to say you always told me that's what life was about about business and marley's going well I'm, i was fucking wrong weren't i and i'm here to save you so really maybe if you look at the Cratchit and Scrooge dynamic that was the Marley and Scrooge dynamic Scrooge was the one who maybe wanted to have the day off or maybe wanted to work a little like for instance a very good one in the book and in the 1935 adaptation that I watched at the very beginning when um, Marley's freezing his hands are cold and he's trying to warm them on the candle and he goes and sneaks a lump of coal and Scrooge is like whoa fucking think you're doing pal He's like, I just want to put a lump of coal on the fire. I'm really cold. He goes, uh, it's, uh, have you paid for it? No, it's my fucking coal. Put it back. But in the 2009 version, the coal box has got a padlock on it. Ah. Uh, as if to say, I padlocked this motherfucker. No one's nicking my lump of coal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Carbon footprint, that is. This is carbon footprint. <laughs> Just stop coal protesters, but that's all it's that's all it's <laughs> Can you imagine the, the stage musical of Scrooge gets protested for the use of coal? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so there was literally hardly any differences that we've covered, although we've covered all the differences that we possibly could. So are we moving on to the intro, outro soundtrack, Richard? Do you have any ideas? Should, uh, should we do the remake first? Oh, God, then let's do the remake. Okay, you can go first, Phil. If you to re- you, you've been given a budget of £50 million. Pounds. Great British pounds, and you've got to go away and you've got to recreate or reimagine Christmas Carol. How are you going to do it? Right, okay, so. This is just, I haven't really thought about it until just now. Right, but what about if it's set at, say, a primary school? 
and Scrooge is the headmaster. He's not called Scrooge, but he's the Scrooge character. Maybe his name's Ebenezer something, so we know that it's Scrooge. And he's pro- he proper hates Christmas, and he's a bar humbug motherfucker. And they want to do like the big Christmas production at the end of the year with all the kids and all that. And he keeps like slashing the budget like a knobhead, and like you know the teachers are pulling their hair out because they can't get enough money to like put wallpaper on some plywood uh, for the school or whatever. And then somehow he's visited by the ghost. So whether he say he, he, he slips on some water or something and hits his head in the in the assembly hall and then he's visited by the ghosts and then when he wakes up he's like nah fuck it we're having the best Christmas show ever and then they go like you get the big montage of them putting it all together and it's like a massive Hollywood production and like you know Central News comes and films it reports on it and it's proper cool a little bit like Nativity I think that sounds like Nativity doesn't it uh, but yes, that's what I would do. Okay, who are you going to choose to play your characters? Okay, so it's got to be Hugh Grant's got to be the uh, the headmaster, right? There's n- there's no other way around it. Hugh Grant's the headmaster. Would have would have Warwick Davis as the ghost of Christmas past. We'll have or Tiny Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Why did you do it? Why? Did you... <laughs> oh my god. I can see his brain working then <laughs> for someone's coming out. No. Uh, we I'd have um oh god, I've forgotten his name now. What's uh what's the uh what's the actor from Flash Gordon? Brian Blessed. Hello Yeah, he'll yeah, be the ghost, a great. ghost of Christmas present, yeah. He'd be uh cause cause he's gonna be dead soon and we're all gonna miss him. So let's get him in one last big blockbuster and then um the ghost of Christmas yet to come. I'd like to keep it Grim Reaper ish, but I think the face of the Grim Reaper uh, it should be like Noddy Holder <laughs> but wouldn't he be screaming it's Chris <laughs> yeah that's what you'd hear that echo when he was leaving him like when he was leaving the ghost of Christmas yet to come and waking up you'd hear it's Christmas and then he'd be all happy and jolly yeah so they that that'd be my three main characters same oh. shit what would you do Steve right no <laughs> I, I've gone way off way off course here I would have the Christmas Carol but based on Oasis getting back together so <laughs> Liam Gallagher Liam Gallagher plays Scrooge and a whole world wants Oasis to get back together and through the night the first ghost to visit him no Noel Gallagher Scrooge the first ghost to visit him is um Damon Albarn <laughs> shows him how good things were in the 90s and how, how both massive they were the second one the ghost of Christmas presents I think would be the, the ginger DJ Chris Evans could say look the world's crap now because you're not together everything's gone wrong and then the ghost to Christmas future could be Liam Gallagher going come on our kid let's get back together so, so yeah yeah. and then what happens was similar to Phil's story is Noel gets to plug his guitar in the amp big blowback throws him across the room wakes up and thinks yeah let's get back together have you just described the the opening to back to the future there (laughs) no 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 no. i'm trying to get oasis back together don't ruin it (laughs) yours yours doesn't sound so bad anymore phil (laughs) (laughs) no 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 how about how about if the ghost of christmas future is like bradley from s club seven and everyone's like gone back to like to to, you know to pop music and go you know if you don't get back together this is what this is what we've got (laughs) Yeah. yeah Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good call, that is. Well, Jedward, Jedward would be the ghost of Christmas future, turning off. I just think, no, I need to save the world of music, so no. Uh. And then Jedward get killed but it's like a snuff movie then and it gets for real so no, yeah. I've, uh, one of my one of my, the, the favourite jokes I ever heard is uh, what you call an Irish woman with two cunts <laughs> yeah, with <laughs> mum mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh then Richie so first of all you've got Hugh Grant as the headmaster you've got Noel Gallagher getting Oasis back together which actually I would pay to see but what's your uh, what's your remake mine mine would be completely different to the original story um, I'd have Ebenezer Scrooge, played by Ricky Gervais, because he can okay, play invisible when he wants to. Yeah, um, yeah. Yes. Have, he doesn't play anything else. I'd have the ghost of Christmas past, probably an old comedian who's dead, but we'd CGI the fuck out of him. Could be Bob Monkhouse or someone like that. Can you do that? Yeah, why not? They could do, do it all the time now, don't they? I've got £50 million, pounds, I'll do what the fuck I want. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> 
So I'm going to do that. And then you're going to have, for the ghost of Christmas present, we'd have someone like Rajesh, M- M- what's his name? Um, Ranganathan. Ranganathan, Ranganathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be the ghost of Christmas present. And I think Christmas future, because like you'd say, you'd want to keep the death thing and the, the face of death. I'll probably have Michael Stipe. Okay, he yeah. constantly looks like death. Yeah, that's uh, good. So that's what I'd use for the ghost. And in the end, I'd have Ebenezer Scrooge say, look, you showed me my past, my present, my past is what's made me who I am today I'm not changing I'm going to carry on being a miserable old cunt and the end is he's he's happy as Larry being who he is who he was he goes on lots of holidays cruises goes to Las Vegas sniffing drugs and cocaine off prostitute tits has a fucking great time and lives happily ever after until he dies at a very old age with a great big smile on his face I wouldn't have him suddenly becoming a nice person because everybody made him a nice person. Okay, well, what about this then? Uh, right, I've got a little addition to, to my version, right? Hugh Grant, he's the headmaster, right? But he keeps shagging all the moms at parents' evening, right? That's uh... a... parents' <laughs> evening? <laughs> <laughs> long speed dating death, 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 death. Yeah. is this an option yeah. so I'm going to start going to more parents evenings no, that, no that's why that's why he's a bit of a knobhead could just keep shagging all the moms all like all like the fit milfs from like Sutton Coalfield he just keeps like, to get the extra grades for the kids that's one of the that's one of his downsides <laughs> What about if we did an, uh, uh, an in between as Christmas special, <laughs> and and like I don't know, like whoever it is, is visited by the in betweeners. Or, or Jay, Jay says he's been visited by three ghosts, and no one believes him. Yeah, yeah, So Jay gets visited by the ghost yeah. of Christmas past, present, and future. When he comes yeah. around, he's trying to like change and be a better person, and everyone's <laughs> yeah. like, "Fuck off, you prick!" <laughs> Just lie <lying> again. <laughs> but like the first go suck me off yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first go sucked me off <laughs> but as long as Oasis get back together that's all we want okay. we need, yeah. I think I think if our listeners are still listening you have to you'll have to let us know on Twitter uh, which remake you prefer <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so as an intro and outro, are we going to have intro and outro for our remake or for the original films, Richie? What are we going to do there? It's for our remake. What if you're okay. going to if you're remaking the film, how are you what are you going to put as your intro and your outro? Okay. I haven't, th- I haven't really thought about the actual remake itself, so I don't quite know. It'd have to be Christmas songs, won't it? Like fucking Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé, shove them in there. Fuck it. Yeah, I, I, I think you can choose pretty much fucking anything, can't you? Just stick some bells and whistles at the start and the end and nobody's going to give a shit. It's just a Christmas film. I'd pro- I'd, I like that Krampus... Uh, tune that I used at the start in the intro I'll probably stick that in at the start as you as the credits and roll in okay but yeah right. Steve any, any thoughts on that uh, uh, for the for the because it's all Oasis themed I'd have I'd have rock and roll star as the intro and then when everyone's happy at the end have champagne supernova ah very good so, yeah yeah didn't Oasis do a version of um, Slade's they did yes they, they have done look um... oh, come and feel the noise Come on and feel the noise. Yeah, they didn't do Merry Christmas. Well, if they're getting back together, that, that could do a version, can't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only, uh, no, but you say only if Noddy Holder is one of the ghosts. And he was a ghost in mine. He wasn't the ghost in, uh, in, in Stephen's. I'll have him in the film if he's going to get the song at the end. So, yeah, he's more than welcome <laughs> to join. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so are we on the uh, what do we prefer, the book or the movies? Takeaways, Phil. Takeaways, good okay. and bad. All right, okay, takeaways. Good takeaway is uh, in the book, Scrooge, he's not a twat, he's uh, just a misunderstood character. And takeaway from, from the movies, from all of the several movies, I liked the way that the ghosts took Scrooge in all of his different guises through that pattern of learning and I think it was the the message is accepting acceptance and acceptancy accept who you are where you are and maybe try and bring a little bit of joy to somebody else's life and you might have a bit of joy given back to you perhaps empathy it's a story of empathy isn't it oh sorry that I could have just said that couldn't I yeah putting yourself in somebody else's shoes you know do do unto others as, you, as you'd have them do unto you it's basically that although I changed my film to be more I'm going to be who who I am I do agree with the, the moral of the original story you know it's, it's 
you should do unto others as, you, as you'd have them do unto yourself. But um, yeah, that that that's the I think that's the core of the story, and that that core of the story has stayed with all of the adaptations from nineteen the nineteen thirty. You could go back even further before the nineteen thirty film with the stage plays that, that probably happened. You know, it, that's been the core for all of them. No matter how much they've changed, that's been there at the centre. I just think the book opened my eyes to the bigger story. I've, and like I say, I've seen the story that many times adapted. I just think the book opened my eyes to to everything really his backstory and I just thought the book was was brilliant that's what we missed we missed doing Scrooge the prequel that's what we missed when like Marley was bumming him in that little room (laughs) 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 for a farthing you're a farthing short pull your trousers down So, yeah, what are your takeaway, takeaways then, uh, Steve? That, that's it, really. The, the sort of... The good the book, like I said, the book was brilliant. I'm glad I read the book. It gave the full story of his background and, and it makes him look less of a cunt, basically, the book does. But then I just think some of the films are sort of... I don't like the way the film made him look a cunt, to be honest with you. I just think that some of the, the films could have painted him in a, in, a, in a better picture. But I think that's probably because as we're going into society now, we're trying to be kinder to each other whereas in those days we wasn't so yeah yeah I think that the, the goodness is the whole backstory the badness is making look him as bad as possible and if social media was around then it would have been public enemy number one part of a panorama special <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I didn't like about the story is how he immediately changed. See, a a change in a person's personality, that's something that doesn't happen overnight. It's like he's had a brief visitation by these three people and suddenly I am now the happiest person in the world. Now, that doesn't just happen because you've had a chat and you've seen a few things if you if he's been that if he's that way that's ingrained in him from for, from such a long time you don't just have a visit with someone and suddenly yes i am so fucking happy about christmas christmas is everything and i'm just going to be lovely and give turkeys out and kiss everybody and stop shagging ghosts doesn't happen <laughs> yes but in especially and if we if we go back to the book and i'd mentioned this at the very start he was pretty much repentant immediately he was like fuck yeah you know i, I think he'd noticed that he'd waste like as soon as the ghost of christmas past took him back he was like he was really happy he was very he was oh i, I remember this i could find my way blindfolded and that's my friend dicky and that's oh when i work for Fezwig and so on and so forth and he was and you could see the joy was coming back to him already and i think and as i said i think that when marley died that's when his joy disappeared as well and because what he'd done he's probably had he was a joyous person got into business with marley marley was like business is our life now and he'd spent maybe what 30 years in just solely focused on business 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 and then when marley died he was completely lost and he didn't know what to do and that first ghost because i think even even in that first ghost thing he was like i don't need to see any more ghosts i understand now or at least bring me the next ghost don't make me wait just i want the next ghost right now and that picking up like when the uh, when the ghost of christmas present took him to his nephew and he was sitting there going oh well it's uh the, the 20 questions well is it is it an animal is it an ass well it's a kind of an ass you know and Scrooge is like oh, God, that's why people think about me and I don't want people to think about me that way he was already repentant and he was already thinking I want to be a better person so you're right you go oh, well, I just wake up and everything's fine but he already wanted to repent immediately but that's your takeaway not mine I, I would like a ghost a Christmas present to take me to so he was using my Netflix account because someone <laughs> keeps logging in and, and they keep using a VPN to change the location so I wouldn't mind, that, I wouldn't mind being visited or free go so yeah okay so score from one to ten which is your favorite the book verse whichever film you want to talk about steve i give the book a 10 i give the book a 10 uh, 10 I've never read it i've seen the films and when i read the book the book tells me the whole story so i'm going to give the book a 10 I thought the book was absolutely brilliant and the version that i watched the alice the sims one i would give a eight out of ten the reason why i've marked it down sorry is because they had george cole as a schoolboy, basically <laughs> and that was like just not good at all so 
Well, I'd give uh, I'd give the book I'd give it an eight only because even though it made the story a whole lot better, it was just hard to read. It was Victorian language, and it was just like I didn't enjoy reading it as much as I've enjoyed reading other books. When it comes to the movie, the nineteen thirty five version, it's really harsh. I'll give it a five, but it is it's almost ninety years old. So uh, Scrooged, which I watched, I give that an eight. I really enjoyed it because it's Bill Murray and there's a lot of good actors uh, and the Christmas Carol version I watched the 2009 Jim Carrey version uh, I'll give that an 8 as well because the kids enjoyed it and I enjoyed it and it gave you a little bit extra uh, there was a little bit like for instance like I said at the start when um, like he's there and Marley's dead and Scrooge is taking the tuppence is off his eyes to make Scrooge appear more meaner so that so that his transformation is better if you know what I mean and I, fa- I actually found it quite funny because you know they had Bob Hoskins in it Gary Oldman was in it Colin Firth and they made them up to look like those people as well which I really enjoyed so like for instance um, uh, uh, Bob Hoskins plays Feswick it's Bob Hoskins that, like Jim Carrey you couldn't tell it was Jim Carrey's face because it's Scrooged up but like Colin Firth is Colin Firth and you're like shit. This is brilliant. So yeah, I, I so um, I'd give uh, I'd give the Jim Carrey version. I'd give that a nine because I really enjoyed watching that. For me, uh, I watched the main uh, the ones I watched fully. The main versions. There was the Netflix animated 22, 2022 Christmas Carol. Four out of ten. But that's maybe because it's a proper kids film and a, a kid might score that much higher uh, A Christmas Carol from 2020 2020 the one with the um, the lady is Scrooge I forget her name oh, that was last year 2022 yeah Melissa McCarthy uh, okay yeah no Saran Rap. oh Saran Jones yeah cling film um, I would give that uh, 8 out of 10 I thought that was really good a really good adaptation the 2014 Christmas Carol oh, I'm not even going to rate it I didn't watch I, I mean, I watched it, but I, I kind of kept switching off and no, it just wasn't good. It was badly videoed and it was just the, the sound was shit and it was, just, it was basically just someone reading out the, the book and someone just acting in the background. It, just, it was just bad. Uh, so yeah, the book, however, I'm with Steve on this. I would give it a 10, not because I particularly enjoyed it so much, but because if a book can still be as big today as it was over 150 years ago or whatever it is you know it, it deserves it deserves that rating it's still just as big and there's still I, I imagine in years to come we're still going to be adapting it and we're still going to be reading it to our kids in 100 years time so yeah it deserves a 10 out of 10 good excellent stuff okay okay so uh, I think the next question is what's next for adapted to screen well that is a very good question Phil uh, the Next, we're going to be more diligent, I think, with the uh, the episodes. We're going to be more on the ball. I mean, this se- season three, we didn't really come into it till halfway through the year. I think I needed to give up my music podcast in order to focus on this, which I did, and now I can fully focus on this. We've had a few ups and downs, but I think we've got ba- got more or less on track now. So in the new year, we're going to try and do one every two weeks. We've got some ideas, some books already in our thunks and thoughts and Steve Steve will be with us for a whole se- a season if he if he likes it who knows he might be in future seasons we don't you know I do, I do love I do love the whole concept of it I really do and it's it's forcing me to read more as well which which is never a bad thing so yeah and I do enjoy the podcast as well they're good fun so yeah well, we've got so I think this will be our last one for 2023 and then in 2024 yep. uh, we've got a couple of things lined up already which we won't say it like because when we say it out loud it never really works but I think we might have January's and February's already sorted we'll talk about that when we're not recorded but first of all but lastly I suppose first of all or lastly uh, thank you to everyone who listens uh, the downloads are coming through thick and fast and all of our episodes as well not just uh, the ones that we release so thank you very much and obviously if you like the episode then tell a friend and share it and give us a rating and a review just leave a leave a comment or something if, if you have an opinion on something we've been speaking about say something and we'll, we might you know give you a shout out for example we have had a few comments via facebook group that i am connected to a book facebook group but yeah i've uh, I put on um, a, one of the book facebook groups a picture of a christmas carol book which one do you prefer 
out of the book and the film and why. And a few people commented, I can't go onto the Facebook group and say, this is my podcast, which one do you prefer out of the book and uh, film that we're covering? Because that's classed as promotion and it gets deleted. So I've had to work out a little loophole type thing. I don't know if I should leave this in the edit or not. Phil's looking at me like I'm fucking bored. Uh, no, because I'm I'm not looking at any of you. I've got the little bits up to read. That's all. Are you struggling to read, Phil? No, because it's on a different page. I'm on a I'm on a I'm on a different page to this one. I'm looking at a, fuck's sake. Right. Anyway. Anyway, so we've had some people who have commented and we've, I'll read them out and we'll tag them and shit. So, uh, yeah, do you want to start, Phil, with uh, one yes, of our... I, I was going to say one of our listeners, but they've probably never listened to the podcast in their life. No, one of our one of our inadvertent contributors. Yes, and this one is from Vicky Lucas and she says, read the book as a teen a few times since, adored it. For me, the old black and white adaptation is a must. Maybe not the best, but it's a tradition. The Muppets is pretty fun too. Wouldn't know it was 13 quid and you didn't like the black and white version, did you, Phil? Uh, no, I didn't watch the black and white version. I watched... The, yeah, actually, yeah, the one that got turned into collar. It was shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking eye bleeding. Okay, so Kristen Matievich, she says, It's in my top three favourite novels of all time, for sure. I have a few favourites when it comes to the adaptations. Number one is the 2019 BBC slash FX miniseries. Brilliant, that was great. Oh, this is the first time I've heard of this. Guy Pearce, brilliant, we've, absolutely we've brilliant. We've done a whole episode and not mention, mentioned this. Uh, I mentioned it before we did the show. It was very no. good. Okay, so check that out then. Oh, really? No, you should do. It's really good. So number two, she says, the Jim Carrey version, which you gave a nine out of ten, if I remember, Phil. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, and it was a good one. The 1938 version, which is shit. three, which, um, which is shit. And four, she says, the Patrick Stewart version, nothing beats the book, though. She says nothing beats the book, which is true. We, we all agreed on that, I think. Yes. We do, yeah. We'll go over the book of 10, yeah. Okay, we've also got Penny Crow. Christmas Carol is a most splendid book that I reread yearly through the years. I've watched most of the movies. My favourite is the 1951 black and white version with Alistair Sim. He's the definitive Ebenezer Scrooge. My second favourite is the 1938 black and white version with Reginald Owen. His Scrooge is a little less believable though, as he seems to almost immediately come to his senses about loving Christmas and mankind. Sim's portrayal is much much more realistic. He has spent most of his life becoming greedy and needs a little more convincing by the ghosts. I'd just like to mention that Penny there mentions that Scrooge changes his mind almost immediately. He does in the book as well, in all fairness. Okay, so I've got uh, Carol Ann Tibiera. Watch them all over and over again. I adore the 1962 Mr. Magoo adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch that one. <laughs> I am going nowhere near that. Fuck so. I just want to point out, Phil, that there's no I before the R, so I think it's Tiberia. Okay, then. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so we've got uh, Jennifer Rowan. Loved it, and the 1951 Scrooge is my favourite. My dad would put it on every year, and we would watch it Christmas Eve until I moved, but I still watch it. Next favourite would be the Muppets Christmas Carol, because it's fun, and I love Michael Caine. I didn't watch that one. I was meant to watch that one. That was the one I agreed to watch for the podcast, but I just wasn't willing to spend £13 on it. No. Should have gone down to sex. <laughs> is that the next film <laughs> right then we've got Shal Good she says I love it favourite movie adaption is the one with Patrick Stewart although I do like the Jim Carrey animated one too I listen to or read depending on time the book every December nice short and sweet I like it and then we have here we have Mike Dishmon he says I have read the book many times. My favourite version on film is actually the Jim Carrey animated version. I think it's because of how they did the spirits. My second is the George C. Scott version, followed by the Alistair Sim version. Heck, I watch the Muppets version every year. 
yes, uh, Mike clearly either owns the Muppets Christmas Carol or he shouts out 13 quid a year <laughs> to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> He's also a follower, he said on Facebook. So if you're listening oh, yes. to this, Mike, we appreciate your participation. We do. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, and uh, of course, do keep listening and uh, chirping in with your two pence worth. Yes. You cunt. David! <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't help yourself, could you? <laughs> David Molina. Molina? David David Molina I've watched almost every movie and TV adaption my favourites being the one with Patrick Stewart other one with Vanessa Williams an older one from the 1970s and one with Cicely Tyson I have never read the book but I want to you should read it it's it's, it's very good fantastic book in fact don't read it get um, get what's his his face to read it to you to you, what's it, to you, to you, what's this, no, you, you, Grant. you, Grant. You, you, Grant, get you, Grant, to read it to you. Yes. Finally. We have Michelle Laird. My favourite is the 2009-ish Disney animated version. The animations are a little freaky at times, but aside from the scene with the rocket, it's very faithful to the book. <laughs> Which is very true. Yeah. <laughs> the scene with the rocket, I'm quite intrigued now. About no, well, it's uh, it's it's the ghost of uh, it's the ghost of Christmas Moon. No, it's the ghost of Christmas. <laughs> it, it's the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And I don't know how I can't remember how he ends up on a rocket, but he ends up on like like a firework, like a massive firework, and he shoots off into the sky, and then the firework disappears, and he falls down uh, and obviously like lands on his bed kind of thing that's his kind of reawakening back into the real world so it's not the ghost of button moon no 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 or a super ted no (laughs) (laughs) so yes thank you for all your comments Uh, we really do appreciate it and thank you to everybody who's listened to the adapted to screen podcast this year it's been a short and sweet season but next year we are going to be absolutely on the ball so yeah please tune in you can follow us everywhere from facebook to twitter or x whatever it is you can we'll leave links and the show notes to the website and you can listen to us on spotify apple youtube podcast addict and Podbean, and yeah everywhere uh, go check steve out he's all over the place doing comedy and shit so we'll leave links to steve in the show notes also so yes this has been the Adapted to Screen podcast season 3 I don't think there's much else to say no thanks for listening and fuck off thanks for listening if indeed you still are Merry Christmas and have an absolutely fantastic new year and they lived happily ever after (laughs)
All right, all right, all right, the women, the women now this time. No, the real women, the real women. You know who you are. Are you, who was making all the noise through the whole movie? My brother, the king of Christmas. English novelist and social critic who created some of the world's best-known fictional characters and is regarded by many as the... She hard bodies really informative and interesting fun facts. Sorry, that was... The fuck was that? She hard bodies really informative Stop it. So sorry. (laughs) Did did you just say... Did did I just hear jihads fun facts then? Is that what I heard? No, no, you didn't. Oh, that's class, that is. That's one for for the bloopers. Uh, (laughs) Sorry.